Hey everyone, my name's Walter, and I'm back here with my other main subject, neckbeards. Now, neckbeards are generally nerdy guys. None of these are required, but common traits include a literal neckbeard, delusions of intelligence, smug atheism, awkwardly hitting on women, and, I don't know, cringy anime stuff. We'll just go with that today, alright? I'm not one for long intros, so let's just begin with neckbeards from Reddit. First off, we're going to read some posts from Reddit just neckbeard things. Anyway, you also seem like an easygoing person, which I really adore. So much for the self-deprecating humor already, haha. Am I being intimidating? I tend to write high-level English already up front. But don't worry, you can rest assured that I don't intend to overwhelm. I in fact trying to impress you. You also have a wide pelvis bone, which make you look fertile and procreation ready, thus more feminine and attractive. Say like a woman that deserves to grow my seeds. The real question now, will you nurse my seeds and grow them? I'd think it was Lucas, but his grammar is actually a lot better than this. This is what we call high level English, apparently. You know, I can't really think of anything grosser to message someone about than your seed. Might want to save that conversation for the second date or something. I'm going to elucidate a little observation here. You're exquisite. That sweet smile, the inviting gaze into the camera, I'd venture to say that your carefully procured angle elicits that you're not just an artist, but an esthete. I'd venture to say I identify with you. You've got that sweet sumtang home gal thing going on. But let's make no delusions here, you've got it all. You're fun, you're a rebel, heartbreaker, soul maker, but I bet you could be colder than an undertaker. So I'm going to make you a proposition. Furnish me with a little of the attention I'm giving you, and I'll return the favor. A little about me, Berkeley grad, 2012, summa cum laude, six-figure income, INTJ, makes the best sandwich you ever ate, six-foot, built, a touch portly but nothing you can't handle, and the more the merrier, right? Fluent pianist, multilinguist, cutting linguist, dig? What could I say? Holla at me. Yikes. The comments tore him apart. Let's check it out. His whole post is confusing. He's trying to use big words to sound smart and then turn around and try to sound hood. Pick a character to portray, homie. I fear this may be a white guy trying to talk to a black girl. Spells Berkeley wrong, lol. Anyone who calls themselves a touch portly is probably more than a touch. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard someone say the more the merrier in reference to their weight before. I would care for this girl, as not just as a waifu, but a true friend up until we reach the point of intimacy, and she finally works up the courage and reveals to me her whole self in pure naked bliss, just like in this artwork. And then, only then, would I proceed to ravage her womb with the unholy amounts of penile pleasure that I can muster, and show her my truest feelings of love through every stroke, every thrust gradually getting more passionate as both me and Hex Maniac reach a symbiotic sensual mix of pleasure and pain until finally our love combined bursts with the force of her orgasm. Soon followed up by mine, in which we would then come closer together, not only in cuddling, but in a state of mind that only lovers of experience could understand. That is my view of this art. Truly a Hex Maniac fanatic. Ravage her womb, he says. I guess Hex Maniac is a Pokemon character? Well, that certainly makes things better, doesn't it? It sounds like a copy pasta, but the only thing that came up when I searched for it was the picture the guy was talking about, so don't Google it unless you want to see that. It's actually kind of amazing how unappealing they can make sex sound sometimes. Hi, beautiful. Do you sell pics? Only pics of me crying. I got so many. As a man, I have a higher authority and a more valued opinion than you in society, and I'm asking you to stop degrading yourself and others and making a joke of everything. You do not have permission to share this DM publicly. I will take legal action. It's funny because it wouldn't have been worth sharing if he just stopped and didn't send that second one. Oops. Why are girls in Toronto so mean? Whenever I ask a girl for her number, she looks at me like I'm filth. No matter how many times I ask, they never give it to me. I once asked a girl out 15 times and she kept saying no. Like, have some damn respect. Maybe they're all just insecure and feel that they don't deserve a good person to cherish them. Like a lot of them aren't even that pretty and need to get over themselves. Edit, so a lot of you guys are saying I'm a stalker. No, you don't understand, it was 15 times at once. I asked 15 times in a row at once, and she said no every time. 
Wow, how can that possibly fail 15 times in a row? You'd think the chances would go up every time if she realized how serious you were. Christ. Anyway, time to head over to our story for today. This story comes to us from Reddit Tales of Neckbeards, which is less active than Neckbeard stories, but it's worth checking periodically, I think. What do you mean it's weird for me to dig through your purse and try to get into your phone? Sorry about the weird format, I'm on mobile. Also, the neckbeard in question doesn't look like a neckbeard, but he acts and smells like one. This is also kind of long, so TLDR is at the bottom. First the cast, me, at the time, 15 female, junior neckbeard, 14 male, X, my ex-boyfriend, who unfortunately plays a role in this story too, 14 male, and BFF, self-explanatory, 14 female. Now that's out of the way, let's get on to the story. I've known JNB since first grade. It's hard not to know someone when you live in a small town. From the beginning, I knew JNB liked me. He always tried to talk to me about video games, which no harm done, I really like games. Would ask people to talk to me for him, and even got my address from another classmate so he could give me flowers on May Day. After a while, I'm pretty sure he lost interest. In middle school, I dated X for a year and a half, and then we broke up because he was an asshole to me. Apparently, after I had broken up with X, JNB posted on Instagram, I wish the girls would date the guys who are nice to them, rather than the ones who bully them and treat them like garbage. But he deleted the post after I found his account a couple years later. The only reason I knew about it was because BFF mentioned something about seeing a post from him a little after X and I's breakup. A couple years passed and nothing major happened with JNB, at least until freshman year. At that point, it had been two years since my breakup with X, and I had since then come out as pansexual to my close friends and my immediate family. I identify as bi now, but y'all probably don't care about that. I switched churches due to homophobic comments directed towards me by the pastor and other people who went there, and went to the church that JNB also went to. At this point, school was in full swing, and musical season had started. I auditioned for a main role in our school production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, didn't get it, of course, but got typecasted because of my red hair. JNB, who was also in choir, got the role of Linus. Because we were in the musical together, people at our church would say things like, Oh, you two are in the musical? Maybe you could do a duet in church. Or, you should do a number to promote your production in front of the whole church. I even had someone ask me if JNB and I were dating, which we weren't, but clearly JNB let all of these comments go to his head. I noticed he started to get closer to me. And not in a he-knows-me-better, I-know-him-better kind of way. I mean, he literally got closer to me. Everywhere we went, he was always beside me, with a body part always against me. I didn't really notice it at first because it didn't bother me that much. I'd figured it was just unintentional and thought nothing of it. Then it got worse. At church, we have classes every Wednesday, which are split into different age groups. For example, all the middle schoolers are together, high schoolers are a group, preschool, you get the idea. Where the high schoolers met was in a room on the very top floor, which also happened to have a blue couch in it. During class, I would sit on this couch with JNB. I sat on the far end so I could lean against the arm. JNB, however, sat right next to me. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, a part of his body always had to touch me. In this case, it was usually his arm against my thigh. Even our teacher, who was also the pastor, asked JNB why he sat so close to me. That was when it started to unnerve me just a little. God, I think I'd noticed that pretty quickly, honestly. Until one day I was sitting like I normally do, I shifted a little, and JNB's hand went underneath my thigh and pressed right against my butt. And instead of pulling his hand away and saying, oops, I'm so sorry, he just kept it there. He kept it there and said nothing. So of course I got up and moved across the room and sat next to the pastor's son, who was a year older than me and did basketball, so he was much stronger than JNB. After that, JNB made a post on Instagram, which I had found earlier in the year, about how he doesn't mean to touch people because he's so devoid of human affection that he doesn't realize he's doing it until he's too late. He then went on to say he thinks it's because he has schizophrenia, anxiety, and depression, all which are self-diagnosed. Yeah, I'm not really seeing how any of those things would make you touch someone. We have people with anxiety in these stories all the time. It generally makes them not want to touch anyone. And schizophrenia doesn't usually manifest until your 20s. But the touching didn't stop there. During dress rehearsals, I would sit on a stool on stage right with a script, keeping track of when I needed to go on and where we were at in the musical. Because of where I was posted, other cast members would often look over my shoulder to also see where we were at or even review their lines. I had no problem with this because I understood that I couldn't be the only person who used the script. 
However, JMB would stand right next to me, his shoulder against mine, and say he's reading the script when he wasn't going on for another three scenes. I even asked him a few times if he could back away a little because I was feeling claustrophobic and he nodded and moved away a little, only to subconsciously move back a few seconds later. It got to the point where I just said screw it and left my post to stand further back in the wings to get away from him. Because not only was the touching thing really really weird, he smelled horrible. I don't like commenting on smell because not everyone can control it. JNB, however, was skinny and didn't sweat much. Most people say he smells bad because his family can't afford deodorant. Yeah, sure, they can afford a Nintendo Switch with Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Smash Ultimate, Skyrim, and Splatoon, but they can't afford deodorant or basic shower essentials. God, can you believe Nintendo is still selling Skyrim for $60 in the year of our Lord 2020? Ridiculous. Deodorant was $5 at our local dollar store. $3 if you got the store brand. It was so bad on some days that I would literally gag when he walked by. I remember high school vaguely. Everyone smelled like they bathed in Axe body spray. I guess it's better than nothing though. And I know some people would say, well why didn't you tell him it was making you uncomfortable? The reason why was because at that point it wasn't really bothering me. I'd never really had a problem with people touching me unless they're complete strangers. I hadn't taken much notice to it in the first place because, like I mentioned earlier, I thought it was all just unintentional. Until the purse incident. Musical season was coming to a close, which meant it was getting closer and closer to our opening night. With our performance two weeks away, we needed to focus on where things needed to go on stage during certain scenes. Since it was a small production with six lead characters and 14 ensemble members, the ensemble worked on blocking the set while the leads worked on their lines and music. This was on a Saturday, and since I didn't have a car yet, my mom was in charge of picking me up when we were done. We lived out in the country, so walking home was out of the question. After a good hour or so, figuring out how to do the blocking, getting it done in the small time frame between scenes, we finally finished. Tired and exhausted from moving heavy things around in a short time span, we all flocked to the seats in the auditorium. I knew it would be 15 minutes before my mom would be able to get me, so I figured I could call her and talk to my friends until she got there until I pulled my phone out of my purse and saw that it was disabled for five minutes. Now, the first thing that ran through my mind was that BFF had gotten my phone and locked it just to tick me off. But something wasn't setting right with me. How would BFF find the time to go down from moving set pieces to lock my phone for five minutes? So I loudly asked, why is my phone disabled for five minutes? To which JNB proudly said, I don't know, why is your phone disabled for five minutes? With a smug grin. I quickly said, what the hell is wrong with you, in a loud tone which caught our director's attention. What's going on over here, our director asked. JNB disabled my phone for five minutes and now I can't call my mom, I explained. I was upset. Not only that, but I was extremely disturbed. What would he have done if he had put my password in correctly? What would he have done on my phone? Would he go through my notes? Go through my apps? My photos? Send awful or embarrassing text messages to my friends? I'm just going to take a guess and say it's the photos he would have gone through. Yeah, this is like a big breach of privacy here. I wouldn't go through a girlfriend's phone, let alone just someone I know. I'm sorry, OP, but next time don't leave your phone out in the open, the director said. Before I could tell him that it was in my purse, JNB butted in. Yeah, don't leave it in the open. Someone had a question for the director, so we went to go help them. I was shaking with anger at that point. I turned to JNB and shot him the hardest glare I'd ever given anyone to show him how much he screwed up. After that, I told my parents. Both of them told me that I should just stay away from JNB, advice that I actually wanted to follow. Later that day, when I was at work, my co-worker, who was also helping out with the musical, was working in the produce department in the store I work at. While I was on my break, I was venting to my co-worker about how JNB dug through my purse and tried to unlock my phone, which made her pissed. She asked me if the director did anything about it, and I explained to her that he thought I left my phone out in the open. She told me that I needed to tell our director and the woman who was running the sound system, who was the cousin of JNB, what actually happened so JNB could be apprehended for his actions. Apprehended might not be the exact word the author's looking for, but fair enough. So at the next practice, I approached the director while he was talking with the lady who ran the sound booth. I explained to him that I didn't leave my phone out in the open and that JNB dug through my purse to find my phone and disabled it, then was proud that he did it. 
The director was just as pissed as my coworker, but neither of them could match the amount of anger that came from JNB's cousin. She was fuming that he would ever do anything like that, grateful that he never figured out my password, and wished that I had told them sooner. While I was at it, I also mentioned the whole touching thing. Both of the adults were so, so, so angry with JNB and were grateful that I told them the full story. After that, JNB had to stay in the left wing unless he had to enter from stage right. He wasn't allowed to be near me at all, and the director even let me lock my purse in his office during practices in case JNB tried to do it again. Oh, and I forgot to mention that after the incident, I posted a long rant on Instagram about how you shouldn't go through anyone's stuff without permission, nor should you touch them, even if they don't say anything to you about it. To which JNB replied with a post of his own, basically blaming everything he does on other people, saying it's because of his possible schizophrenia because no one will hire him, blah blah blah. Then he tried to save himself by saying he was sorry, but not for going through my stuff or touching me without my permission. He said he was sorry that I was made uncomfortable by his unintentional actions and that next time I should say something. Deep down, I know that even if I did say stop, he probably wouldn't have listened. After this whole incident, my BFF came forward and told me that he had been touching her in the same way he had been with me. I told her right out that she needed to go and tell the director because he would keep JNB away from her as well. So she did and things got better for us. Until X got involved. A little bit of time passed from BFF coming forward and saying that JNB touched her in the same manner before my ex approached me. This conversation still infuriates me to this day. Basically, he came up to me and said, Why are you trying to pin all of JNB's friends against him? Taken aback and a little confused, I asked, What do you mean? I haven't been pinning anyone against him. JNB told me that you posted on Instagram about him, and now no one will go near him, X said. I firmly explained that the post didn't mention any names, and if people knew it was JNB, that was his own fault because he openly commented on my post. God, these guys always do that. They should realize that the vague post is better than what'll happen if they try to defend what they did. I really hate seeing someone use mental illnesses they probably don't have to defend against something they knew they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. I mean, I know he's 15, but this touching is grade school shit. As far as I know, the only friends he's lost is BFF and I. We have every right to avoid him, I explained. X still wasn't buying it. You didn't have to be so mean to him. You know he has depression, and it wasn't his fault. As someone who's actually diagnosed with depression, his behavior had nothing to do with depression whatsoever. Even if it did, that's not an excuse for going through someone's stuff and trying to unlock their phone. I was getting angry with him at this point because it was clear he just wasn't getting it. X gave me a confused look. He repeated again that I didn't have to be so rude to JNB and left before I could even tell my side of the story. Apparently, JNB had been telling everyone that I had been bullying him online and made up lies about what actually happened. After I started to avoid him, he kept posting on Instagram about how lonely he was and that his life was basically ruined now. Anyways, sorry for the long story, this kid really frustrates me. I'm not even sure if he qualifies as a neckbeard, but I figured the smell and his behavior seem pretty neckbeardish. Thank you for reading, and I'll answer any comments anyone has, in case I didn't cover certain things in enough detail. Right, so this turns out to be another really long video for me. Apparently, I've lost the ability to figure out how long something is by seeing it. I said most of what I wanted to, so let me know what you think about it in the comments. Oh right, the X is shitty too, I better at least spend a sentence saying that. There wasn't a whole lot neckbeardy about the guy in the story, but it does seem like the kind of thing I cover. All you have to do is be creeping, really. This guy is still young, so hopefully you can turn it around or something. Anyway, it's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you have something to say, once again, let me hear your opinion in the comments, because engagement's good for the algorithm. I think... I haven't really kept up with YouTube lately. If you're new here and want more stories from Reddit and maybe other things, consider subscribing for more of the same. I plan on making a lot of videos in the near future here, including Reddit relationships and dating hell. But I'm about to pass out over here, so let's call it a night. Have a great night, everyone, and don't just touch people. It's weird.